Uh, hello, everyone, um, and uh, good morning. I'm Sang Jun Cho, uh, Director of Application Technology Center at Park Systems. And thanks for the, the organizer to give me this opportunity to present uh, this work. And also the congratulations uh, for interesting subject and the successful forum, uh, even in this uh, COVID-19 situation. And then uh, I'm very happy to introduce the recent uh, SPM hybrid technology development at uh, Park Systems, uh, uh, especially in this important section of correlative microscopy techniques for comprehensive material characterization. Uh, during the talk, uh, I will introduce the several the prototypes, uh, alpha and beta hybrid equipment, uh, which are still under development. And um, so why hybrid metrology is so important? Uh, in the preface of the book, uh, Nanotechnologies, uh, Zhang uh, Marie Lang, who received the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1987, told Beyond Dimensions Shrinkage, the new era of complexity is initiated. And it becomes true in every aspect of science and engineering. Uh, therefore, uh, different metrology techniques uh, are required uh, for developing nanotechnology, uh, which are a unison of physics, chemistry, biology, and industrial sciences, which meet up to the atom or molecular uh, scale. Uh, these problems in nanotechnology can be solved by using, also using multiple tools in unison to add their respective strengths to overcome individual uh, limitations. Hybrid metrology has gained uh, significant recognition in recent times as an approach to consider considerable reduce uh, parametric uncertainties by combining different measurements of the same measurement. This kind of scientific challenge used to be academically met uh, first, then adopted by industry later but recent rapid development of uh, industries has forced us to develop metrological solutions. Good example is the semiconductor industry. The semiconductor industry is increasingly in dire need of a hybrid metrology to meet their uh, meet that need in development and uh, manufacturing. However, uh, in order to maximize the gain from hybrid metrology, there are several uh, many homeworks left still uh, we should be working on. This is one example. Uh, for every added measurement techniques, uh, it is uh, really crucial to perform a careful error analysis in order to use its full cap uh, capabilities. So PAC, solu PAC Solutions has been successfully uh, implemented in semiconductor industry. PAC has won uh, more than 160 cases of automated AFM since uh, uh, 2015. As a matter of course, we were selected one of uh, one of most promising 20 semiconductor technology solution providers in 2018. In addition, we were also selected again for one of the top 10 advanced material solution provider uh, last year. As the credibility increases, the industry uh, require uh, or the request part to develop advanced hybrid instrument solutions. Uh, I won the uh, like a, a national grant of a Nano Convergence 2020 uh, titled uh, Development of a High Spatial Re uh, Resolution SPM System and Nano Optical Module uh, in uh, uh, 2018. Under this grant, we are currently developing automated AFM and WRI hybrid industrial uh, equipment, and also the optical hybrid research AFM. Uh, we are finishing AFM WRI hybrid alpha equipment in the December and starting joint evaluation program with one of the major semiconductor companies. And in wide light interferometry, uh, the height of the sample sub, uh, height of the sample surface at each pixel can be calculated from the light intensity, very uh, light intensity variation due to interference while scanning the height of a mirror objective lens. And since WRI could generate 3D images with the height information, it is also called optical profiler. 
So AFM technology has a measurement area of uh, up to 100 micrometer uh, and is uh, suitable for high resolution and high accuracy image measurement, but not suitable for full die range measurement, uh, which is frequently requested from the industry. In other hand, uh, WRI uh, technology is suitable for measuring full die with the area of 100 micrometer to a few millimeter, but would produce uh, low resolution and low accuracy data compared to the AFM. Therefore, we think that uh, these two technologies would complement each other very well. So WRI module in, uh, integrated with the NX wafer 300 millimeter system, uh, which is Puck's best seller in semiconductor industry. NX wafer has a very solid platform uh, with less than uh, 0.05 nanometer noise floor and WRI module also equipped with the same closed loop Z scanner with the low noise detector used in AFM to guarantee their uh, best performance of a, a WRI. In addition to com a conventional WRI mode, uh, phase shift interferometry called the PSI mode for high resolution imaging uh, was also uh, equipped. These are uh, uh, repeatability uh, comparison between WRI uh, and uh, PSI mode. PSI mode showed enhanced repeatability with a different uh, processing algorithm, especially in the low height sample with a uh, nanometer uh, range. Uh, usually, uh, PSI mode needs less frame to capture than WRI mode. So there's another advantage that it can save time in averaging captured data in each position. And also these enhanced results were mainly origina originated from closed loop scanner, but uh, stability of NX wafer 300 millimeter system also affected. WRI has a strength in measuring a higher sample height from few hundred nanometer to micrometer range uh, these are WRI images for standard samples and hard disk drive. Uh, this is the example of a WRI and uh, AFM imaging processing sequence from optical view. Uh, this is captured by 10x objective. And this is a WRI. Um, uh, it's a, a wireline interferometry is able to provide large 3D view of sample which is 800 micrometer by 1250 micrometer, then AFM zoom in to look, uh, look at very small target objects such as a, a pore tip recession, which reads and writes in hard disk drive. Changing lens in WRI from 10X to 50X using mot motorized turret give us higher resolution images uh, quickly. This is another very attractive application of AFM and WRI hybrid system uh, in various industry. This hybrid setup can be used in uh, defect, hotspot detection and review. Hotspots of a pattern structure uh, can be detected by comparing images of reference and target sample areas. And also high speed hotspot detection by WRI enables fast localization for defect sites for high resolution AFM review. Developing a software for automated review of hotspot detection by WRI and AFM is one of our uh, big homework. WRI uh, can also be used to monitoring uh, C CMP processes, it's a chemical uh, metal polishing processes in large area. Uh, this is uh, about 8 millimeter by uh, 12 millimeter images. As I emphasized before, WRI on the solid platform with ultra low noise floor give us few nanometer resolution in G axis in WRI images. So you can see after CMP picture, you can see the just a few nanometer changes on the, on the images. With uh, stitching process, WRI enable us to image full dye 3D mapping. This WRI image produced by stitching 25 images to show 20 by 21 millimeter full dye map. However, minimizing errors in stitching uh, is not so easy. 
Therefore, we have been working on to develop automated stitching process and calibrating WRI data with the AFM data. This is an essential process required for full dye or reticle mapping. So dye means, so, uh, which is a, in the context of an integrated circuit, is a small block of semiconducting material on which a given functional circuit is fabricated. A reticle, on the other hand, referred refer to a single layer of a pattern that covers a small portion of the wafer. So reticle usually contains series of the dyes. These are basic process of stitching. So in, pre uh, in preparation, we need to define non-linearity and field curvature error in addition to visual calibration. After uh, correcting non-linearity and field curvature errors, we need to align X, Y, and Z as a whole image. Then using advanced flattening process to minimize the uh, errors. So uh, we created pseudo surface and segmented them and stitched again to evaluate uh, stitching uh, algorithm. For simulation, we created several types of uh, pseudo surfaces uh, with, uh, uh, without noise and with uh, random noise and then the presence of a, a scribe line and G offset and tilting. It is easier to understand to see following figures. These images are without uh, noise and then with noise. So when you can see these lines, so without noise and with noise. And this is a nine by 11 images, which means this image is constructed by 99 images stitched. Pseudo surface number three include uh, uh, scribe lines, and uh, number four uh, uh, include a random uh, Z offset uh, without tilting, and number five has a random G offset, uh, the errors with the uh, uh, tiltings. These are results of a stitching algorithm. At this time, all images include a scribe line here. So including just noise, here, and there's no error was produced in stitching. And, but when there is, uh, we apply random Z offset over hundreds of nanometer, which produce negligible errors over less than uh, one femtometer. And if you include random uh, uh, tilting errors without angle alignment, then error becomes as large as a tenth of nanometer, which is not acceptable. However, if we, uh, include angle alignment, the error will reduce again to less than 0 0.1 nanometer. This is the actual uh, stitching test with the real VLSI step height standards of uh, 180 nanometer. This is the data imaged in uh, like April and six months ago uh, before optimizing the stitching algorithm. And this is uh, the current uh, result. So you can see how much improve uh, we have made. And under the same research grant, our participating partner in Incheon University, uh, Professor Su Bong Che, has been constructing prototype of an uh, optical hybrid research AFM. This system is capable of uh, most SPM techniques and visual spectroscopy, Raman, uh, photoluminescence, and, uh, et cetera. These are preliminary, uh, preliminary data of Raman and photoluminescence uh, imaging of a molybdenum uh, disulfide. The image shows normal uh, run, uh, uh, Raman uh, image, uh, uh, Rama resolution. Uh, when you see it, uh, it around the 300 nanometer, and which is an excellent number for the, the general Raman uh, system. It also have capability of a visual spectroscopy. So when you see these uh, different types of uh, patterns, then we can distinguish using visual spectrometer. And this data uh, is measuring IL induced thermal uh, signal on IL uh, plasmonic uh, nanostructures. Uh, since uh, this system is built on um, NX12, uh, the AFM head is exchangeable with the skinny eye conductance microscopy head for live, live cell, live single cell imaging. 
These images are important, uh, are imp are almost impossible to obtain uh, from AFM head. So you can see uh, this is a, a, a crook, uh, it's a, like a, a ciliar cells, and also this mouse red brain and detangles the neurons in the when we incubate in the uh, liquid. So you can see the high resolution of the neuronal networks. So in addition to uh, scanning eye conductance microscopy, we are currently developing pipette-based scanning electrochemical microscopy. SICM can help us to get the topography, uh, topographical information of sample surface using ion current signal between pipette and, and sample surface. But we cannot get the electrochemical uh, information with this kind of setup, but adding ultra micro electrode as a scanning probe and uh, potential step to the SICM, then it transforms to pipette based SECM. But in conventional SECM, it is a bit difficult to control the, uh, the pipette sample distance, thus uh, reducing the re reliability of the data. So in order to complement shortcomings of SICM or SECM uh, independently, we combine strengths of these two techniques, so called SICM, SECM. So uh, it has been introduced. There are two channels. One is to detect the uh, ion current for topography, and the other is to uh, detect the uh, Faraday current for EC response. The strong point of this technique is a simultaneous measurement, both topography and electro electrochemical property. But it is also a bit dif uh, difficult to characterize the probe and its, uh, and its setup operation. There is a different technique called the scanning elect electrochemical cell microscopy. It is also a pipette-based SPM technique designed to allow simultaneous conductance and electrochemical visualization of the surface and interface. Compared to other pipette-based techniques, it is quite simple, easy, and fast setup and operation. It enables the localized EC signal analysis with a nanometer scale. In addition, um, uh, these two techniques are only oper uh, operatable in uh, liquid condition, but SECCM uh, is working in the ambient condition. Um, I have won the, the additional grant in research equipment development and advanced project uh, titled uh, Photo-Induced AFN de uh, Development for Molecular Composition Analysis. The development of the industrial automated version is due until the end of next year. So uh, photo-induced force microscopy uh, can obtain chemical specific nanoscale images and IR spectra. The incident uh, mid-IR laser is electrically triggered to pulse at FM, uh, which is the IR laser pulse frequency, and where the F0, the first cantilever resonance, and the F1, the second cantilever resonance, are the first and second uh, the, the detectable signal of the cantilever. The topography uh, the, of the sample is measured at uh, uh, this F1, second cantilever resonance, and the photo-induced dipole-dipole interaction force is measured at uh, F0, the first cantilever uh, resonance. This is the actual setup we have been established. So this is alpha system, uh, which can measure 300 millimeter wafer samples. So uh, we can uh, receive the demo uh, or testing the samples of uh, the, the industrial customers. With uh, global attention on the role that uh, plastics play in our ecosystem, many researchers are investigating uh, new bioplastics or biodegradable polymer alternatives to reduce the ecological impact of um, plastic packaging. One such promising uh, thermoplastic is a polyarctic uh, acid called the PLA. This is a bioplastic uh, decomposes into lactic acid and can be derived from renewable resources like uh, cornstarch or sugar cane uh, during starch fermentation. So uh, PLA is widely applicable, cost efficient to produce and degrade naturally in the environment under certain conditions. 
For this reason, PLA is found in many consumer products such as medical implants, 3D printing, and uh, disposable and compostable cups and plates. There are some disadvantages in the material properties of a PLA, primarily in the form of gas perme permeability and mechanical properties. Additionally, uh, the ease with each PLA melt makes it unsuitable to hold hot liquid. Engineering ways to strengthen the material with aid, aid uh, in its adoption. One of the possible candidates for improvement is the nano composition of a PLA with an alkyl acrylate copolymer. Uh, the sample has been studied using PIFM to determine how the materials are dispersed. Using the excellent correlation, uh, between PIFM and FTIR spectra, we are able to uh, confidently show where the two materials are located within the material matrix with the nanometer spatial uh, resolution. This is a PIFM image of a, a silicon germanium, germanium and silicon oxide, thin fat structure. We can clearly distinguish uh, uh, the two different materials, uh, silicon germanium, uh, and, uh, germanium and silicon oxide using PIFM. So same structure was imaged using TERS and published in 2015 by comparing uh, PIFM images with the TERS images, it makes it easy to see which is better. And hybrid metallurgy related activity can also be seen in the standardization activity. There are ISO standard for data transfer format for SPM and development of a Standard for AFM data format for hybrid metallurgy in TC201 and SC3 data management and treatment committee. So there are many activities uh, related hybrid metallurgy in uh, in many uh, in many area of uh, uh, the science and then and community uh, communities. So in conclusion, uh, technological development for hybrid metallurgy is uh, active and important. And today I introduced the WRI. Uh, AFM, WRI hybrid equipment, optical hybrid research AFM, and photo-induced force microscopy. Uh, and I believe the prototype of optical hybrid research AFM is one of kind and ultimate research tool for 2D material, energy, and uh, nanobiological uh, research, and much more. And thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Cho, for, for the talk and the um, overview on the uh, wait a minute. overview on the developments in the um, atomic force microscopy techniques. So let's uh, take one or two questions since we are a little behind. And the time. So um, Giovanni Longo is asking, can PIFM work in liquid environment? Are there um, any limitations? Okay, which, uh, uh, can, you, can, you, can you give me the question again? Can PIFM work in liquid oh. environment? Are there any limitations for that? Oh uh, yes, yes. PIFM work in liquid environment, but not this alpha system. But uh, so we are planning to uh, the incorporate in um, the beta systems. So actually, PIFM work uh, can work in the liquid environment, but not not this system yet. All right. Okay. So uh, second question to PIFM coming from Silke Christiansen. Absolutely exciting talk. Congratulations. And can PFM be retrofitted to existing systems? Um, at, at, at this stage, I'm afraid it's uh, quite difficult right now. But uh, like uh, in, the, in the future, we are planning to uh, make it uh, much more modular. So it can be upgradable, but uh, not at this stage yet. All right. Uh, okay, one more quick question. There are many questions coming in for you in Q&A, um, Dr. Cho, so you might want to look in there after your talk. And uh, let's take that. one more from CK Lee. And CK is asking, is the hybrid system only applicable for white samples? Uh, we can, I uh, thought so this is one of the big advantages that we can take a white sample 
but uh, we can also measure on the small samples too.